So today's lecture is going to be pretty short. It is the last real review type thing. Uh, we are simply going to talk about resistor combination techniques, which you all probably know how they work, but we're going to get into a more formal description. So let's start by looking at a network containing several resistors in series. All right. So let's say that I have some resistance R1, like so. Another resistance R2, like so. All the way out to some resistance R. That's a terrible looking R. Sub N, right? So this works for any number of resistors in series. And let's say that this network is connected to something else. So it could be part of a greater network. And we know that there is some voltage drop across all of those resistors connected in series. If there's a voltage drop across all of those resistors connected in series, there must also be some current flowing through all of those resistors. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply going to assign a voltage drop across each one of these resistors. And I'm gonna choose the polarity of those resistor voltage drops such that the current is flowing into the positive polarity terminal so that arguably everything should be positive from that perspective. So we have some voltage associated with resistor one, the R1 some voltage drop associated with resistor 2, VR2, all the way out to some voltage drop associated with resistor R sub N, like so. So if uh, I can write a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation around this loop, and I will find that V, my known voltage drop over all of the resistors in series, is just going to be the sum a VR1 plus VR2 all the way out to VRN. Using Ohm's law, I can express all of those resistor voltage drops in terms of that current I. So it's going to look like I times R1 plus I times R2 all the way out to I times Rn. And factoring out I, I'll have R1 plus R2 all the way out to R sub N, or I times an electrically equivalent resistance, REQ, where REQ, and that is definitely a G and not a Q, is equal to R1 plus R2 all the way out to R sub N, or in mathematical notation, we will have the sum from I is equal to one to N of R sub I. So effectively, whenever we have resistors in series, they simply add together. You guys probably already knew that, but now we have formally described why that works using Kirchhoff's voltage law and Ohm's law. For resistors in parallel, we can follow a similar derivation except we're going to need to use 
Kirchhoff's current law. So let's say that I have a network of resistors. They're all connected in parallel now. So here's R1. Here's R2. All the way out to some nth resistor connected in parallel. Once again, this network could be part of a larger network um, where some known amount of current I is flowing into this re resistor network. Because all of the elements are connected in parallel, they will all have the same voltage V across them. And I am going to express uh, individual resistor currents now uh, with the direction chosen such that the current is flowing into the positive polarity terminal so that all of my resistors are absorbing power and all of my quantities should be positive. So we could call this IR1, IR2, and IRN, like so. Applying Kirchhoff's current law to this network, current flowing in to our resistor network I will be equal to the current flowing out of that top node, IR1 plus IR2, all the way out to IRN. We can use Ohm's law to express all of these resistor currents in terms of that common voltage V. So that's gonna look like V divided by R1 plus V divided by R2, all the way out to V divided by R sub N. Factoring out V, we're gonna have a factor of one over R1 plus one over R2, all the way out to one over R sub N. or V divided by the equivalent resistance, where in this case, our equivalent resistance, REQ, is one over R1 plus one over R2, all the way out to one over Rn, and then to the negative one power, so we're taking the reciprocal of it, or one over the sum from I is equal to one to N of one over R sub I in a more closed form mathematical notation. So effectively, when we have resistors in parallel, we add the reciprocals of the resistors, and then we take the reciprocal of that sum. Again, something that you guys learned in your earlier classes. Okay. Um, so we've formally described here how resistors combine. So now let's work a problem or two actually combining resistances, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up web work uh, homework set number three. And we are going to look at a problem or two. And then I'm going to show you how I do resistor combinations. Let's look at problem two, I think. Yeah. So this is a good one. This is a ugly ish looking resistor combination problem that I usually get a fair amount of questions asked about. So let's take a crack at one part of this and see how to apply the techniques that we've just learned. Okay. So I'm going to draw this network down here. Actually, I'm gonna start on a whole new page. 
scrolled too far. <laughs> so I have some resistance here. Like so I believe I have a resistance oriented like this. And I have one diagonally through the middle like so, diagonally through the middle like so. And let's slap some numbers on this. So 100, 25, 200, 75. And then let's see, R2 is 200, R1 is 42, so 200 and then 42. R3 is 250, R4 is 54. And let me label my terminals, A, B, C, and D. Uh, I'm gonna make a slight modification here. I'm gonna give myself little stubs of wire to indicate my terminals as opposed to just putting the label on that particular node, okay? So this is the circuit that we're gonna analyze the equivalent resistance of. Let's pop back over to the web work here. So the goal of this problem is to determine the equivalent resistance between a particular pair of terminals, right? So in part A, we're looking at the resistance seen between terminals A and terminal D. For part B, we're looking for the resistance seen between terminal D and terminal C. And for part C, we're looking for the resistance seen between terminal C and terminal D. So I'm gonna let you guys just pick which one of these we're gonna work. Any of them will illustrate what I wanna talk about. So just say A, B, or C. B sounded the loudest, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Arbitrarily does not matter. The process is gonna be the same for everything, okay? So our goal here is to find the resistance between B and C, all right? so. R, B, C is equal to question, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do in any problem like this where I can't just look at the damn thing and tell how it's going to combine is I'm going to identify all of my nodes, right? Uh, so using lots of different pretty colors and all that kind of stuff, let's take a crack at that. So I have this node over here in red. this node here in green. I have this blue node. I have this light purple node. I have this pink node over here. And let's use this light blue color. So I've identified all of my different nodes and I am going to label any node that doesn't currently have a label, right? So node A has a label, that's the blue node on the top right. B has a label, that's the node on the top center. Um, C is labeled, that's the red node on the top left. Uh, this little purple node doesn't have a label, so I'm gonna call that one E. The one in the bottom middle is labeled with D. And so the one over here on the right, uh, bottom right, I'm going to call F. So I have six nodes, six colors. We all on board so far. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put node B on the left-hand side of my page. And I'm going to put node C on the right-hand side of my page. And then I'm going to play connected dots with resistors. Okay. So I'm just looking for the different ways that I can get from B to C. Okay. So the first way, 
and I usually do the simplest path first, is just directly from B to C through the 200 ohm resistor. Okay. And I'm going to put a little check mark there to remind me that I've already taken care of that path. So that's the simplest way to get from B to C. And now we have to explore our other paths, right? So another way that I can get from B to C is to go through node D, right? There's a path from B to D to C. So I am going to put node D here in the middle. And I can go from B to D. through that 50 ohm resistor. And then I can go from D directly to C through the 54 ohm resistor. And I'm gonna check this guy off and this guy off. But we can see there's actually another path that I can take to go from D to C, right? So to go from D to C, I could also, instead of just going straight through the 54 ohm resistor, I could go from D to E to C. So halfway between D and C, I'm gonna put node E. And I can go from D to E through the 25 ohm resistor. And I can go from E to C through the 100 ohm resistor. So now I've got pretty much the entirety of the right hand, or excuse me, the left hand portion of the circuit taken care of, right? So now let's explore the other ways that I can go. Well, I can go from B to A to D. Right. So A is going to be halfway uh, here, halfway between A and D. So B to A is the 42 ohm resistor. A to D is the 250 ohm resistor. So I've got this guy taken care of and this guy taken care of, but there's also a different path that I can take to go from A to D. I could go from A to F to D. So halfway between A and D, I'm gonna put node F. To go from A to F is the 75 ohm resistor, and to go from F to D is the 200 ohm resistor. And so now I've got all of my different paths and all my different resistors taken care of. And to me, this looks still pretty bad but we can obviously see simple things where particular elements are connected in series and parallel. It's more obvious, at least to me. So for instance, we can see that the 25 ohm resistor and the 100 ohm resistor are in series. So we could replace that single resistor, or excuse me, we could replace those two resistors with one single resistor that is just 125 ohms, right? So I can get rid of node E by adding these guys together. I have 125 ohms there. Similarly, I can see that my 75 and my 200 
are in series. So I can add those guys together, replacing it with a single 275 ohm resistor. What combinations can I see now? The 250 and the 275 are in parallel. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, so what's 250 in parallel with 275? We have calculated. Well, I should have talked about this a moment ago, but we can do it right now. So if I'm trying to do 250 ohms in parallel with 275 ohms, this is going to be one over 250 plus one over 275 to the minus one, which is going to come out to some number. Okay. So there's actually, I believe, a easier way to determine the equivalent resistance of exactly two resistors in parallel. Right. So if I have some resistance. R1 in parallel with some resistance R2, I know that REQ is one over one over R1 plus one over R2. That's what my expression up here simplifies to for exactly two resistors. What I'm going to do now is just manipulate this a little bit. I'm going to multiply this guy by R2 over R2, and I'm going to multiply this guy by R1 over R1. And so what that's going to give me is one over, and I'm going to have a common denominator of R1 times R2 in my denominator. And then in this numerator, I'm going to have R1 plus R2. And then since I have one over that fraction, it's simply the reciprocal R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So I'm saying that because you're going to see me do something like this, 250 times 275 over 250 plus 275 practically every time I have only two resistors in parallel, because that's easier for me to do than adding the reciprocals and taking the reciprocal. Okay, so I just wanted you guys to know where that's coming from. All right, so 250 times 275 over 250 plus 275, 2,750 over 21. So this is another little subtle thing here. Okay. So the 250 ohm resistor is between nodes A and D, and the 275 ohm resistor is between nodes A and D. So when we replace those two parallel resistors with an equivalent resistance, it's also going to be placed between nodes A and D so that we know exactly where it's supposed to go. So I'm gonna erase both of these and replace it now with a single resistance between A and D, right? Which came out to be 2750 over 21 ohms, according to my calculator. You raise your hand. So you're talking about that middle branch thing there, right? I disagree entirely, right? So there's a 54 ohm resistor between D and C, and there's a 125 ohm resistor between D and C. 
So those two are in parallel and we're going to replace those two with a single resistance. So in order, what you're talking about is effectively when we short out a resistor with a wire, um, which is absolutely things that you're going to see. That's going to happen whenever a particular resistor is connected to the same node on both sides, but none of these resistors here are connected to the same node on both sides. So there is no shorted out path around the resistor. All right, so what combinations can we make here? I, I see a series one, okay. So we're gonna add that 2750 over 21 to 42. So that gives me 36, 32 over 21. What combinations can I make now? Which of the parallel combinations? There are two of them. The 54 and the 125. Let's do that one first, sure. So 54 times 125 over 54 plus 125. So I'm going to erase both of these and just make a connection between D and C. 6750 over 179. What can I do now? The 50 in parallel with that 36, 32, et cetera. Right? So 50 times 36, 32 over 21 divided by 50 plus 36, 32 over 21. My calculator gave up on doing fractions. Thirty-eight point seven eight seven and some change ohms. I'm going to store this as A. What can I do now? Add those two in series, right? So that's going to be plus sixty-seven fifty over one hundred and seventy-nine. Seventy six point four nine six. And then that seventy six point four nine six ohm resistor is obviously in parallel with the two hundred. And we're left with a single equivalent resistance. of 55.3326, so 333 ohms, right? So I like using this connect the dot method because it lets me easily see what individual simplifications that I can make. And I typically work, like I said, from um, the simplest path to the most complicated path so that as I work from the bottom up, the resistor combinations get easier and easier and easier. Yes, sir. You could draw a completely separate circuit. Um, I 
I'm too lazy to redraw it that many times because for this, we did something like eight or nine combinations. Um, I'm not going to discourage anybody from doing that, especially as you guys are learning things. It's probably better to make sure you're following, you know, step by step so you can understand when and where mistakes were made. But as you get more comfortable, I think, you know, eliminating a path and all that kind of stuff in the original drawing is probably easier, like I did here. Um, let me see if I can find a problem in the web work here that has a short circuit. So that we can address what was happening. So this one definitely has a switch closed. Okay, so let's look at this particular problem and we're going to look at part B in particular where that switch is closed. Okay. So we have following network. like so, and then in part B in particular, we are told that our switch is closed, which is gonna introduce a short circuit here, okay? Now, these are all given as conductances. And as I said, I believe on our second day of class, conductances are dumb and we're not gonna use them. So we're just gonna convert all of these conductances into resistances, right? So for G1 of 38 millisiemens, that's just gonna be one over, 38 times 10 to the minus three comes out to be a 500 over 19 ohm resistor. G2 is given as 55 millisiemens. So one over 55 times 10 to the minus three is 200 over 11. G3 is 40 millisiemens, so one over 40 times 10 to the minus three is just 25, so that's a nice normal number. Uh, G4 is 23 millisiemens, so one over 23 times 10 to the minus three, a thousand over 23. And then let's look at this uh, G5. So one over 30 times 10 to the minus three is 100 over three. We're trying to find the resistance measured between these terminals. I am arbitrarily going to call, uh, call these terminals A and B. So this is gonna be node A. This is going to be node B, and we're going to say R A A B is equal to something. Okay. So it's not obvious to me what this is going to simplify to. So I'm going to do the exact same procedures we did a moment ago. This one's going to be a little bit easier because they're just less resistors, right? So identifying my nodes, this is node A. This is all one node. It's not labeled yet. We'll give it one in a second. This is node B. So being as lazy as possible, I'm gonna call that big blue thing in the middle, node C. We're finding the resistance between A and B. So I'm gonna put A on the left-hand side of my page, B on the right-hand side of my page, and now we need to figure things out. 
Okay, so there is no direct path between A and B. We have to go through node C first, right? So I'm going to put C smack dab in the center. And I can see that there are two different paths to go from A to C. I can go through the 25 ohm resistor, or I can go through the 200 over 11 ohm resistor. So that means those two resistors must be in parallel. And I've taken care of this guy and this guy. To go from C to B, I have two different paths, either the 500 over 19 ohm resistor or the 1000 over 23 ohm resistor. So that means those two resistances must be in parallel. So now I've taken care of this guy and this guy. So the, there's only one resistor in here that we haven't taken into account, and it is that 100 over 3 ohm resistor. It is connected between node C and node C. Okay. So it is effectively in parallel with that big short circuit that's running through the exact middle of our circuit. What do you think happens when we have a resistor in parallel with a short circuit? So we would have REQ is, in this case, some resistance R5 in parallel with zero. So that's times zero over R5 plus zero is equal to zero. So effectively it gets shorted out or thrown away. We don't even need to include it in our diagram. If we wanted to, for whatever silly reason, we could put it like this, but it's not going to contribute to the overall resistance of our network, okay? So this one doesn't actually do anything. So instead, we would just have 25 in parallel with 200 over 11 in series with 500 over 19 in parallel with 100 over 23. So that's what happens when we sort something out. All right. Um, any other questions about resistor combination or anything? Okay. So you guys have an in class assignment and you also have a mini lab. Okay. I want to take a look at the in-class assignment really quickly just to give you guys a suggestion. So my suggestion for this particular problem is to find the equivalent resistance of this thing on the right-hand side first, because it's common to every single one of the terminal pairs that I'm gonna have you look at. And so if you figure out what that equivalent resistance is and replace it with a single resistor, your life will be much easier doing all of the subsequent steps instead of figuring that part out over and over and over again, which is wildly annoying. So that's my suggestion. 